I should start by, first of all, apologizing for my voice. I seem to be coming under with something. I don't, I, I suspect is emotional, you know. My wife and I just lost one of our dogs. Um, and that, that's never easy, but this video is not about that. It's about really two things. One is I wanted to say thank you to those people who have subbed to this tiny channel of mine in the last week. Um, I'm 120 subscribers and even though that's like a tiny number, uh, it means a lot to me because if you are of an artistic soul, as I believe that I am, and I'm sure a lot of you are, um, of course you do art because you love doing art, but um, it feels extra good when, when you can share it with somebody. So having people interested in what I do, how I build the shop and the art, the guitarist that I'm building, just really, um, really makes me happy. It kind of fills me with excitement. So, um, <clears throat> even though I am not the happiest, you'll see, as you can clearly see, I am, I am still grateful, which is, which is important. And <clears throat> I wanted to kind of talk about a few things that I tried to say on, on the live video, the one that I ended up deleting because the audio was absolute garbage, and and also talk about the unique challenges uh, that I have to face here in, in the shop. So um, if you went to the intro of the channel, and, and I, I know at least one of you guys did, one of the new subscribers, you know that I don't currently live in the US anymore. Um, my wife and I moved here five years ago now, and one of my goals moving here was to restart my guitar building and do it full time, which is kind of what I'm, what I'm doing these days. Um, but of course, starting a shop in the middle of the jungle has not been easy. And there's a lot of challenges that I've had to uh, come up with creative solutions for. Uh, for one, uh, this, this shop is solar. So and, and one day I might make a detailed video about this, but I'm gonna tell you, for challenge number one that I had to overcome was getting electricity back here. So I am basically a mile and a half away from the main road where electricity uh, from the city comes through. And uh, getting electricity to this part of the shop, I mean, to this part of the farm, which is this far from the front, was gonna be stupid expensive. When I mean stupid expensive, I mean stupid expensive. Maybe $17,000, $20,000. And I have to confess also that the grid here is not that great. So even if I spent all that money, it didn't mean I was going to have electricity all the time because, uh, yeah, we have power outages all the time. As a matter of fact, we have already two today. So one of the things that I came up with with my brother when we were setting this up is like, hey, why don't we go solar? So in, in my roof, I have 18 uh, solar panels. Each one, I believe, is 300 watts, and uh, that feeds some batteries that I have outside. Again, I might make a video just about this, but I want to just share, I guess, the overview of that first challenge that I had to overcome. And that's how I power this shop. Obviously, because of that, I have to be very conscious of the tools that I use. I can't just use a five horsepower motor and, and think I'm going to be able to uh, make it work at all. But um, for what I do, because it's really, a, at this point in time at least, one-man operation, and... Uh, power tools that you might have in your garage. Uh, this works excellent. Uh, the other challenge I had to overcome is humidity. Here, oh, look at that, I'm a klutz today. Here, we are basically in the middle of a rainforest. So it rains basically all year. All year we have rains. Now there's a difference in intensity. Right now we are in, to, to, technically speaking, the drizzle season, even though it's summer which is kind of funny, but this place is just mud. Every single day, mud in and out. And if you do any kind of woodworking, you know that humidity is a big pain in the rear. So another thing that I had to do to make this work, and maybe that could be another conversation for another day, is build the humidifier rooms. So I have a room where I keep my lumber that is being getting, I guess, 
getting ready to be used, um, getting them dry before I actually make it into a guitar. So, for example, this neck here, before it, I started cutting into it and shaping it, I let it sit in my room for almost two months, you know, until I'm like, okay, it's it stopped moving, I shouldn't move anymore. And uh, then I started the milling process and what have you. But because I'm building in such a humid environment, it also doesn't make any sense for me to dehumidify the wood too much. Meaning, running the, the dehumidifier and putting the wood at, at what, seven, six percent or whatever some people say is the optimal, doesn't make too much sense for me. I am trying to make it acclimated to here, and of course, uh, a little drier than that, but um, once you seal the wood, and if, especially if you, if you do a good job sealing, then uh, it should be fine. So far, it's been great. So far, uh, the guitars that I've built here at the shop, which I've, I've been building here for, what, three years now, are, are doing awesome, and uh, people are happy, so I'm happy. So that's the second challenge that I had to overcome being here. And the third challenge, um, which is possibly the craziest one that no, nobody warned me about, is the type of insects that we have here in the middle of the forest. So I'm, I'm actually captured one because I wanted to show it on the camera. Uh, if you are living in the States, I'm sure you know about termites. But termites are a joke compared to this guy. My wife and I call these beetles, we call them the screamers. I don't know if this one's gonna, it's gonna make the sound for me. But we call them the screamers because when you grab them, they tend to squeal. And yeah, it's, it's biting me right now and it's squealing. I don't know if, I don't know if you can hear that, but this guy is a female that emerged possibly the last few days from one of the pieces of lumber that I have uh, in the pile of, uh, you can hear her screaming right there. Uh, in the pile outside. Um, so in order for me to to harvest the lumber, which obviously I do myself, uh, I chase all the whole thing. Look at this thing. It's a little guy. Um, I have to also uh, put uh, poison on the lumber. So, uh, the locals call this product maderol so that these guys don't come in and eat it all. And I'll, I'll tell you a crazy thing about this is they eat all kinds of wood. Because I, I heard a long time ago somebody saying, oh, yeah, but they don't like cedar. They don't like, no, they, they eat everything. <laughs> they don't care. Um, as a matter of fact, mahogany, which is considered by many to be a hardwood, something that, you know, bugs will eat, but not preferably, um, might be their, his favorite meal. Because, um, and all my mahogany is, of course, I sprayed with my oil to prevent them from eating it. So the third challenge has been um, these guys, the, the guys that I, my wife and I call the screamers. I can find out the name for it and maybe maybe I'll share it also in the, in the video. Maybe I'll put it in the description somewhere I can post. Um, the fourth challenge that I had to overcome uh, being here is getting internet all the way to the shop. Now you might say, yeah, you don't really need internet, so why why would you need, well, um, I beg to differ because I don't know everything. And there are times where I need to get some help from somebody online, maybe go to a forum, uh, maybe help with wiring, which is one of my weakest uh, points. And not having to walk a mile and a half to go get internet from the front of the farm is quite helpful. Could I do it? Of course, but imagine, okay, oh, I don't know what's the, what should be the value for this pot that I'm, okay, let me walk a mile and a half. It makes no sense. Um, so another thing that I had to do was come up with a way to repeat the signal from the front of the farm all the way to the shop. And the way that I did that is, is actually quite funny. And that could be another video for another day because I think, uh, I think it's <laughs> it's a really South American engineering the way that that works, but it works great. Another challenge. So are we here right now? Uh, number five was getting water to this shop. How do you get water to a shop like that? Well, as I said, this is a rainforest, so you might guess that water is never too far away from anywhere here, and that's kind of true. Some for some months of the year where it, it, it rains once every maybe two weeks or three weeks, it can get a little dry, 
But my grandfather um, had here a plantation of passion fruit. And because he had passion fruit, and all these acres were passion fruit uh, business many, many years ago, uh, he, along with some, some of his workers, d dug a well that is something, something like 35 to 38 meters. I can't, really, I can't really see the bottom, to be honest with you. And it's not too far away from the shop. So part of my decision to building a shop, I'm sorry, excuse me, right here, is because I'm not too far away from that well. And what I ended up doing is using that well to fill a tank that I put on a second story, uh, which is currently storage for me here. And then that feeds the bathroom and of course the, the sinks for washing my hands, washing my face and all that stuff. But as you can imagine, water from a well is not the cleanest, more so because we have, which is gonna be is my number six challenge. We have a lot of bats. When I say a lot of bats, I mean thousands of bats here. Um, <laughs> you know what, this video is sounding like, like I messed up, but, uh, but I'm gonna go, after I talk about the challenges, I'll, I'll bring up why I still love this place. Um, and because we have all these bats, one of the things that you have to do in order for you to avoid uh, bat manure everywhere, bat manure in your tools, imagine, that stuff just rusting away, everything you, you, you own, um, you have to leave lights on all the time, which is another reason why making this system solar and independent of the electricity of the farm made sense for me, because it's a good way to protect that stuff. But now, since I said all those negative things and I don't wanna end a video with negativity, it's not really my goal, um, I wanna tell you why I am here which is, I think, the most important part of it all. I am here, uh, for one, because this was the land that my grandfather loved and the one that he worked. And I feel a special connection to him because of it. And so, hence why the guitars are called Cordovis, which is his last name. That's one of the reasons. But number two is because here I have the freedom to do as I please. This might sound political, but it's not really political. Uh, or at least, well, I guess you could say it is, but it's not in a, in a traditional political um, divisive kind of way. It's just, it's just how I feel about how one should have, one should conduct their life. I think the most important thing a man, or a woman for that matter, should have is control of, of his and her life, her, her future. And here in, in Ecuador, here on this farm, I can literally uh, do as I want. I can plant what I want. I can harvest the wood that I need to harvest. I can build what I need. Um, I don't have to answer to like codes or anything of the sort because we are in a rural area. So having that freedom, the fact that I was able to build a shop with just a couple of workers and myself and uh, without spending ridiculous amounts of money to do so, um, is exactly what, why I said, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It took me maybe a year, a year and change to get it up and running to where I could feel, yeah, now I can build guitars. And funny enough, as I was doing it, my aunt, it's a whole family that lives here on the farm, by the way, kept on telling me, hey, um, when are you gonna build something? Because I haven't seen you build anything. But um, I was, I was, preparing myself. I was making the tools. I was making the benches. I have two benches. I was making a miter saw station. I was making router tables. I was making lofty tables. I was making a CNC, which could be another video for another day. Uh, this is uh, one of those printed CNCs. I was repairing a lot of tools that were damaged when I, when I actually came here because I brought everything in a container. We didn't bring, we didn't bring furniture. We didn't bring anything except for my tools. And, and in that sense, I am the luckiest man because my wife is so supportive of, of my of my art of what I want to do, um, and yeah, so that is why I am here. That's why I built uh, guitars in the middle of the jungle. All right, I, I think that's gonna be it for this video. It already went kind of long, but I wanted to make to make it to again to thank everybody who has subscribed. And if you just happen to run into this video and you want to see what this guy is talking about. Um, there's more videos in the channel. There's a guitar that I introduced about a week ago 
that it, I think it's one of the prettiest ones that I've made. But there's there are a lot more in the channel that I'm quite proud of. And uh, I'm gonna be pumping out more videos, uh, not like this one, more videos about guitars, about building, and what have you. And, that, and if there is interest about some of the things I mentioned in this video, uh, leave me a comment, let me know. And I hope uh, you can join me in my little YouTube venture. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, again, thank you for listening all the way through and uh, be good.